pizza, Every fellowship, encouraging greetings, and um, how great it is to be in, in the place that we are at with believers. It's so encouraging. So encouraging. If, if you're new here and this is your first time, welcome. We're glad you came and joined us. Hopefully you got a handshake, a hug, high five, whatever, whatever you, the Lord led somebody to do this morning. Hopefully you are greeted. And also we'd like to stay connected with you. There's a connection card. It's yellow. It's in your bulletin. If you didn't pick one up, it's okay. You can run back there in the back and grab one right now. Um, it's yellow. We'd love to stay connected with you. Fill that out. Also, if you have any prayer requests, there's a card in there that says Men of Faith. And it's 15 before in the upper left corner of the card. And you could say this is anonymous. That's fine. Um, and what happens here is there's a men group that meets and prays 15 minutes before the service for all of those requests. Um, <coughs> wow, what an amazing way to start off and worship this morning. Can we get a round of applause for Carmen and Grace? here we got uh, this is the, the last Sunday of Matt's sabbatical so thank you for praying thank you for those who, who stepped up and served in ways that maybe you hadn't served before uh, thank you for doing that um, also we look forward to celebrating with Matt when he comes back next weekend Sunday there's going to be a, a celebration party so there's going to be a meal after the service to, to celebrate the, the Tucker's return so please do come to that Please bring your appetite and encourage Matt and Tammy and Cameron and remind them how much we love them and how much they've been ministering this time. It's very important to do that. And also you can sign up uh, for a headcount in the back there in the foyer. There's sign up, so please do that because the outreach team is going to provide a meal. And also as part of that, the outreach team is also accepting free will donations. There's, there's no price to pay. However, anything that's donated is going to go to fund the outreach team. And those of you that are familiar with the outreach team, they, they do the iConnect every year. And the iConnect is an outreach to middle school here in Martinville. So it's an absolutely great program that we've been doing for, for several years now. And uh, also there's a prayer awakening conference that's coming up in September 16th through the 17th that our denomination is putting on. You might remember the, the elders went to this last year and we gave a little bit of uh, our experience. And so now we want to encourage others to go this year as well. And this is going to be in Fort Wayne. It's free. Um, anybody who's interested in going, um, please talk to me or you can talk to an elder and we'll get you, get you signed up. Okay, um, we're going to have a guest speaker again this week is Jeff Mark. Um, Jeff Mark is a young, has been a Young Life leader for 26 years, and he's worked for Young Life for 22 years. And he's, uh, we've, we've been, you know, we were just talking about this prayer, uh, prayer conference awakening. And so as part of that, um, this is something that's really encouraging to read. How long we've been praying, um, at least Jeff's team has been praying to send Young Life to Martinsville and to see God move in that way. And it's been 20 years that they've been praying for an opportunity to bring Young Life to Martinsville. And he says that there's been three years that we've been working together. And I remember talking to Matt about trying to set this up and how Jeff Martin's been working with Matt to, to connect that and try to set up the dots and who needs to go where. And it seemed like it didn't work out and there were some setbacks along the way. But recently, within the last year or so, uh, Young Life has been a plant in Martinsville, and its purpose, Jeff's going to get into this more, but it's to reach high schoolers, and it's such an amazing thing. It's, a, it's an awesome thing, and so that's been a dedicated effort for three years. A little more about Jeff. He's, he's got a home church that he's been going to it's for 17 years. It's called Exodus, and it's in Bloomington. Recently merged with Sherman Oaks, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll let, let Jeff go ahead and, and take over here. Uh, you guys can give me a warm welcome, please. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Thank you guys. Uh, if you're new, so am I. I've never been here before. And uh, it's good to be here. DJ, uh, when I walked in, maybe the only person that I knew. And um, he told me a little, he told a little bit about myself. He's like, I'm, uh, I'm wearing the same shirt today. So you would recognize that I am the same person that is in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, my lovely wife, Rachel, my son, Anderson, just turned 10. I have an adopted son who's 29. He teaches in Bloomington. He's not in the photo. Um, but that's a little bit of our family. I'll tell a little bit more about Young Life here in a second. But I wanted the most important thing for you to understand about me right now before I get into what I'm going to share uh, from God's Word is that I, I'm not a fisherman. I don't fish. It's not something I really connect with. If you, if you are a fisherman, you can go ahead. If you like fishing, anybody like fishing? Because I'm going to tell a fishing story. Uh, what happened was I was on a family vacation. My family here, and then my brother's family, and my parents, we all went to South Carolina just a few weeks ago. And to and have a kind of a family reunion, we, we rented a house and all stayed together. And so my son could hang out with his cousins and we could just connect. And we kind of live in different parts of the country. So my wife booked a, a boat tour for the, for the afternoon as just a way to experience, you know, boat tour. Like we're in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, there's a lot of cool waterways. We're, we're kind of all into like seeing the, the, the birds and the nature and the different plants and maybe there's dolphins. And so we went on this boat tour thinking we were just kind of see the, the Charleston Harbor, or, you know, the, the nature and all that stuff. And uh, we get out there and the, the guy, the great dude, was, he was like, hey, did you guys want to fish? And we're like, oh, I guess. I mean, it's like a half day opportunity. And he's like, well, we can, we can totally fish. Uh, and so we, he pulls us into this, this part of this, uh, I don't know my sea term, but you know, this bay. And he throws out one of these nets and just brings it on. And oh, help me, help me bring on this fish. And there were, there were like, literally like 20 fish just on one throw that were about this big. And I was like, oh my gosh. And he's like, this is bait for later. Okay, that's right. And so he sets us up. None of us knew we were going fishing. He's got all the fishing poles. And then, um, let's see if we got this. Next slide. Oops, sorry. The next, there we go. So my son is on the front of the boat with his, his awesome cousin, Tyler. And then the guy is to the right. My sister-in-law, Beth, is there. And they're just, they're just out there fishing. And we're just having a great time. He's... He set up these other these other poles on the other side of the boat that have these fish as bait for something, and then um, we're just I'm just, we're just relaxing. Beautiful day, Charleston Harbor, and uh, and then all of a sudden the guide says, "Shark pole! Somebody grab the shark pole!" And I'm like sitting next to the shark pole, and. I'm thinking, I can, okay, I'll try, whatever. What, what do I have to lose? Uh, I'm closest to it, I'll just grab it. And so he comes over to me, and the guy is like, here's, here's how you do it. Uh, you, you put the, the pole on your hip, and you give it some, you point down, then you just pull it back, and then you point it down again, you pull it, okay, okay, that's fine. I'll try to pull this one in, whatever. Uh, Unfortunately, there was not a shark on the end of the line. But fortunately, there was this red fish on the other side of the line. And the look in my face is this look of disbelief. I didn't know I was going fishing. And uh, this red fish, the, the guy was like, I've never seen a red fish this big. In fact, take my picture. I want to show all my buddies, <laughs> all the other guides, that this is a red fish like this actually exists. I felt like I was a celebrity all of a sudden <laughs> for pulling in this fish I had no intention to, to fish for. And so uh, I felt so unworthy of this catch. I had no idea that this was what the plan was. 
I did not catch the bait. I did not know where we were. I did not know how to drive the boat. All I did was respond to this call, grab the shark pole, and then this is what happens. And I get to show all my friends and people if I wanted to on the social medias, look how great of a fisherman I am, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. And even in the midst of this happening, I had this sense of like, this is what God is doing in our lives. Amen. He is the guide. He knows the fish. He knows the world that's out there. And he's inviting us to grab the shark pole and participate in the mastery work that he's already doing. And I felt that in a way I don't think I've ever felt before that I was just along for the ride. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to do with catching this fish other than I just grabbed the pole and I gave it the best effort that I could. And uh, you might have an idea that this fishing story, I'm going to tell this fishing story that's in scripture. It's in Luke chapter 5. It's verses 1 to 11. We'll look at it. It'll be on your screen if you don't have it in front of you. Um, but I think that Peter experiences a very similar thing uh, in the beginning of Luke chapter 5. So Jesus one day was standing by the lake of Gennaresic, uh, and the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw the waters, at the waters edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets and getting their nets ready for the next catch. And he got into one of those boats belonging to Simon, who later know him as Peter. And he asked him to put out a little bit from the shore, and then he sat down and talked to people from the boat. I was near a lake recently, you realize, if you ever hear people on the lake, the, the voice travels real far. So it's actually a good acoustic thing to do, is to get out on a boat, to be able to talk to more people with a little bit more volume. So maybe that's why Jesus pulled out. Uh, but when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, pour out of the deep water and let the nets down for a catch. And so Simon Peter answered, uh, Master, we've been working hard all night. We haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. So Peter's a professional fisherman. He's probably uh, grown up in this trade. It's probably a family trade. And so he, he knows what he's doing out there. Uh, he was working hard and didn't catch anything all night. But he says, you know, Jesus, because you say so, I'll throw out the net. What's the worst that could happen? And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full with this catch of fish that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. Felt so unworthy. It felt like they had nothing to do with this incredible catch of fish. Verse 10, so, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's uh, business partners. Partners in fishing. So then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats on shore and they left everything and they followed him. I think there's, we could dive into this for a long time, get a lot of cool perspectives, and you guys probably have some really cool perspectives on this book or this passage as well. But I think that there's an analogy to God's restorative and redemptive work that he's doing in this. And he's inviting Simon Peter, James and John, he's inviting them, hey, I am going to do some amazing things in the lives and hearts of people. I want you to come along. I want you to grab the shark pole. I want you to throw your net out there. I will take care of it. I'm the master. I know how to do this. I know the work in the hearts and minds and lives of people that I'm going to do, I'm inviting you to take part in it. And Simon, James, and John, they leave their other business pursuits and they come follow. And then the beautiful stories that we see 
in the life of Jesus' disciples followed. Um, similarly, this idea of God knows what he's doing, I'm just along for the ride, is a little bit of the journey that I've been on uh, with Young Life. And Young Life, I'll give you a, just a quick description of what it is. Uh, it's a national and international mission to young people. And our, our mission is about sharing life and the gospel of Jesus with adolescents. Uh, high school students, sometimes middle school students, often also have college students involved. Uh, and that is our desire. It's, it's sharing life, uh, not just a message, but also being, I don't know, People ask me what I do. I say I'm in faith mentoring. I am the director of a faith mentoring network in South Central Indiana. And so this building relationships and this sharing life and faith in Jesus with adolescents takes a few different forms. Uh, a lot of it is friendship building. It's about being a real person that is a, an older friend to guys and gals that are in high school. Um, the bottom right, uh, my friend Mike is there. He's at um, Wendy's um, with <laughs> some of his friends. Mike works in tech. He's a computer programmer, and he's hanging out with these high school students uh, and just sharing life together. They're, these are his friends. Um, and he also has the opportunity to connect with them at some of our Young Life discussions, which are like Bible studies, that are open for any student, no matter where you come from, no matter what background you have. Uh, we look at the, the words of Jesus and talk about the ways that teenagers can really uh, metabolize and understand at their level. Um, we have social gatherings that often we call parties that are very social, that any student, no matter what your what lunch table you sit at in middle school or high school, no matter what religious background, if you have any religious background, we have kids that, are, that come to Young Life who come from different religious backgrounds, that they are welcome to come be a part of this party and hear what we have to say about Jesus Christ, knowing that we're speaking to students that don't know that much about who he is or what he's all about. And then we also have Young Life Camp. Young Life owns and operates a couple dozen camps in uh, North America, and they are youth resorts. We anticipate that any student that would go would have the best week of their whole life at Young Life Camp. When I was in high school, I did Young Life, and my Young Life leader said, this will be the best week of your life, or we'll give you all of your money back. In my whole life, I've never heard a guarantee so bold. And I remember thinking, that is gutsy. I want to take you up on that. And it was when I went to Young Life Saranac Camp in northern New York back in 1995. It was the best week of my life. And I subsequently had about 27 other best weeks of my life at Young Life Camp <laughs> since then. But that is a little bit of a picture of this relational network that we are about in Young Life. I have been the director for Young Life uh, in South Central Indiana, primarily Bloomington. For the last 22 years, I was involved with Young Life in high school in Columbus, Ohio. I went, I was a Young Life leader through college at Miami University and in suburban uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And this is where we have Young Life in uh, South Central Indiana right now. Kind of the center of the geography is around Bloomington. Uh, we've had Bloomington, uh, Young Life at North and South for 20 some years. We've had Young Life in Brown County for about 15 and Edgewood for about 15. And then uh, I was getting, I got a phone call a couple years ago about somebody who's like, what would it take to get my start in Martinsville? And the pandemic had just happened and it felt like it's going to be really hard. Uh, volunteering, as you might know, crashed during the pandemic, just all around with all sorts of organizations and churches. And, uh, and a lot of our volunteers are actually college students at IU, and we just had a really hard time for two or three years of, getting more, of having the same number of volunteers that we had before the pandemic. And so I was like, I don't know if this is really gonna work out. So I helped orchestrate some meetings, met some great people here in Martinsville, uh, and it, it seemed like it wasn't really gonna work out. Well, then this last school year, 
something happened. I felt like I was along the ride for them. And uh, we just had a huge group of IU students that wanted to become young IU students. Uh, and it just, as October started happening, and I started seeing that we were having more people interested in becoming leaders than we had current leaders. And I thought, maybe I need to call my the friends I made up in Martinsville say, do you guys, do you guys want, should we, can we try to run with this? And uh, so we, we talked and met DJ and we got together for some prayer and um, lo and behold, uh, at the end of February, we, we officially placed three Young Life leaders in Martinsville High School. And this is something that DJ mentioned that, that we, had, I've been a, would invite people up to Martinsville and pray for the last about 20 years, at least once a summer, and pray for students at, part, at, at Martinsville High School. We go out to lunch, we go out to dinner somewhere, and then pray at the high school. And then this, it actually happened that, that the Lord brought Ashley and Ben and uh, Kennedy into, and each of their stories is beautiful and surprising. Uh, Ashley's like a, a second wind college student. Uh, ben grew up in Young Life, his parents were on Young Life's dad, and, and Kennedy is a student at IU um, studying education. And they, we placed them on a team, and this is like super cool. But here's the thing, when you start Young Life, it's gonna, it takes a long time. Because it's, imagine you're, uh, imagine being a missionary into a new community. It just takes time to build friendships, to build rapport, to build a connection that people actually trust who you are and what you're about. Uh, getting to know the lay of the land of the, the learning the language. Uh, high school kids talk differently than I did when I was in high school. <laughs> and uh, you've got high school kids, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Bet, right? So we, uh, it takes time. So I figured, you know, we started back in February, hopefully by like, November, we were getting some traction and some students coming around. Well, it was a couple days later, I got a phone call from one of our young life leaders at Brown County. And uh, he says, you know, hey, J Mark, I'm sorry to call him J Mark, you can call him J Mark. He <laughs> says, J Mark, uh, we've got this student leadership weekend coming up in Cincinnati, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. He's like, I got this, this Brown County kid wants to invite his friend from Mark. Like, oh, great. How cool would it be for one of these, a uh, friend of a Brown County kid who's from Martinsville to come check out this uh, student leader weekend that is already sold out in Cincinnati. It would be so cool to have that kind of perspective. And so, yeah, let's bring it. That sounds great. And then uh, move on. And it's, and that's, it's Friday. It's the day we're leaving for Cincinnati for, you know, two-night overnight trip uh, to this student leadership conference. And uh, the leader calls back and he says, hey, j -Mark, um, the guy from Arsenal wants to bring three of his friends. <laughs> and I was like, what? His friends, I don't know who this kid is, but none of his friends have ever heard of Young Life. Uh, we're, we're crossing state lines. And uh, we leave tonight, and it's sold out. So I say, absolutely, let's, let's make this happen. <laughs> and so I get on the, I, I'm like starting to pick up my friends and I'm calling my friends uh, who are running the, the conference in Cincinnati and I'm saying, is there any room? Like, I'll, I'll buy a hotel room somewhere nearby. And she's like, oh, I wish that you would have called an hour ago. We just, the hotel is full. The next door hotel, we just gave up a, a room or two that we had in the next door hotel. I mean, okay, that's fine. We'll figure something out. I'll sleep in my car, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then, I, she messaged me uh, just uh, 10 minutes later. She's like, you're not going to believe it. We had enough drops. There's one extra room. Praise God. There's an extra room. So these Martinsville kids are coming. And I realized, wait a minute. They don't really have a leader yet. Uh, ben has no idea these guys are coming. So can we convince Ben to drop everything and then grab the shark pole <laughs> and show up this weekend for these guys who doesn't know and drive them across state boundaries? <laughs> to the student leader weekend that they have no idea what they're going to. And uh, we call Ben, and Ben's like, I'm in. I'm going to show up. He, he, he canceled whatever plans he had all weekend. And he picks up uh, at like 9 o'clock at night. 
He's going to find, you know, the text messaging, figures out where he's picking up these guys to come from Martinsville. And then this picture right here is the first ever picture of Martinsville Young Life. It is um, Kate is on the left. We have Sam, has the, the baby dreads. And then, um, oh, shoot, I can't remember the name of the guy in the hat. Uh, ben is the leader, and then we've got Thad on the right, the publisher. And uh, I said, this is, this is cool. You don't realize this? If you're new to Young Life, we're in the hotel lobby at the Holiday Inn. And uh, I'm going to take a selfie. We call them jelfies in Bloomington. I'm Jeff. Like, no, it's a thing. Uh, and we, this is the beginning of Young Life. And it was cool that you could tell they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. This, this place is sold out. There's six or 700 high school students and leaders from all over Ohio and Indiana. And, um, but they had a great time. And it was the beginning of this beautiful thing that was happening, especially in Sam's life that he was realizing that Young Life is an opportunity for him to share his new faith with other friends uh, in the world. Um, and I asked him if he could put into his own words what that was like and how Young Life has impacted him just since, this is, you know, March 3rd, just a couple months ago, what has Young Life and the experience of Young Life been for him and his friends and, uh, Keep side of your work. Oh. Let's get, get, get the volume ready. All right, all right. What is up, big church? So, my name is Sam Hamilton, and Jeff asked me as a student to kind of answer a couple questions and to give my perspective as of what Young Life um, in Jesus has done for me. So, the first question being, um, how has Young Life blessed my life? And I would say Young Life blessed my life because it is a platform in which Jesus could really move through so I could see Jesus going to Young Life events. I could see Jesus um, going to these events where this Christ-like community was. I could go to these events or this camp and, and really see the love of God. So um, that's what really blessed me. And then the second question being, um, how has it um, really impacted your friends' lives? And so for me personally, I've been following Christ for about one year now, and um, a little piece of my testimony is I used to do a lot of drugs, and I used to drink a lot of alcohol, and all of my friends, or not all of my friends, but a lot of my friends would do similar things, and to really see um, these same friends that I used to do these things with um, come with me to young life, and to really just like step back and witness and watch Jesus use young life as the platform to like move in their hearts and to really like cultivate fruit within them is just a really awesome thing to be a part of and to witness. So I would say that's how it's blessed me personally is because um, I got to see childhood best friends um, just live their entire lives not following Jesus and come to young life and then leave following Jesus. So that's what it's meant to me and that's how it's personally been a blessing in my life. <laughs> so since that first weekend that Sam brought some of his friends, uh, God was doing something in Sam that we could never have expected. He started to lead a Bible study, or he was in the process of starting to lead a Bible study, not affiliated with a church, and not even affiliated with young life. He just wanted to invite friends to hear about Jesus. And so it kind of became, he invited the Young Life leaders, and the Young Life leaders started to connect with the students that would come and help lead that Bible study alongside of him. And, you know, a dozen or so students in just the second half of the last semester came to one of these Young Life Bible studies here in Martinsville. Uh, Sam would also bring friends to area-wide Young Life meetings that happened, and have happened all summer, in, usually in Monroe County down toward Bloomington. And he also got three of his friends to come to Young Life Camp, which is pictured here. One of the better pictures, uh, they don't all actually have mustaches. Those are actually fake mustaches. <laughs> uh, but he got three of his Martinsville friends to come to Young Life Camp to have the best week of their life. Uh, there was one student who was like, you know, this is great. I'm not, just so you know, Ben and there, but I'm not going to come back next year. I'll, I'll appreciate this the first, the first time but I'm not going to come back next year. After the first
first night, he's like, I'm coming back next year. Absolutely, <laughs> coming back next year. So, uh, not only did they have the best week of their life, but a couple of Sam's friends did uh, say they were going to give their life to Christ that they were going to be And this is something that we were not expecting. Uh, it just felt like we're on this ride. I'm just going to grab the shark pole and to respond to the phone call. Ben was doing the same thing. Ben did not anticipate becoming the young life leader that he's become in this last few months. Um, and that's where that's where we're seeing God work in some really cool ways here in Martinsville. But the need is massive for young people today. Uh, if you're like me and you went to high school a while ago, like before, let's say, 2010, the vibe is very different. The, uh, the emotional and mental hurt and need that our teenagers are experiencing right now, what is just normal among teenagers is really sad. I see a couple of you nodding because you know. Um, their world is very uh, broken and it's very lonely. And we can, we can talk about kind of why that is. But there are, there are historians that are saying that this generation of young people might be the loneliest generation ever. Uh, and a lot of it comes down to they have a lot of connections <coughs> that are virtual, but not that much connection that is real and personal. And they are hungry for that. And right now, in the last couple of years of, since the pandemic, we're really seeing young people responding to young life leaders and to the community that we're building in young life more powerfully than I, in my whole career in doing this. I've been around young life since the mid nineties. And so I'm just gonna throw a couple statistics your way. Uh, first of all, since 2010, major depression for girls has jumped 145% among teenagers to nearly 30% of all teenage girls. So if you go to Martinsville High School across the street, line of all of the, the ladies, you can expect that three out of 10 have a major depression mental health challenge. Uh, with the boys, the acceleration has gone up just as much. It's a, it's a lower total number, it's more like one in 10, but major depression in boys has jumped up 161%. 2010. And then boys are dealing with this issue that a lot of you probably are aware of. That in, this is back in 2018. Approximately 7% of all boys <laughs> can be classified as having an internet gaming disorder. Which is a sad reality that their connection and their relationship with video games is so intense that it has a detrimental effect on their normal experience of life. And whether it's, you know, how, there's varying degrees of how that is affecting them navigating the real world, but there is a significant number of students that are spiritually, mentally, and socially in a state of unhealth. Um, to the point that we're seeing, I'm seeing things, I don't know if I've seen before, I read this in a book uh, by Jonathan Haidt, um, no, I think it's Haidt, Jonathan Haidt, uh, he's, one, he's a researcher who's doing this. He, he said he's encouraging healthier environments, that young people need healthier environments that might include taking part in regular religious services or joining groups organized for a moral, charitable, or spiritual purpose. He mentions that in this book, The Anxious Generation, which I highly recommend. It only came out this year. Um, talks all about this, the anxiety of the generation. Of teenagers. Jonathan Haidt admits in this book he is an atheist. He is saying teenagers might need to take part in regular religious services or get involved in organizations for a moral, charitable, and spiritual purpose. One of the whole chapters is about the spiritual uh, lack that this generation has and that it's a problem even from the perspective of an atheist. The spiritual lack is a problem. And so we in Young Life feel uniquely postured to enter into this 
uh, challenging world and to be life givers, sharing our lives, sharing our friendship, and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with young people. Now, what can we all do to grab the shark pool? I think that my hope in this is that we can all feel that the Lord has a, is doing a beautiful redemptive work. And it's way bigger than any of us, but there's something that we can do to grab that shark pool. And here's just a couple thoughts. Is one is to show up in the lives of teenagers. They are hungry for these kinds of relationships. It can be a neighbor, it can be teenagers here at this church, it can be somebody that you work with, or a child of somebody you work with. Taking a real and Christ compassionate <coughs> into a teenager that's, that you're connected to. Nephew, chop, you know, niece. Um, I, I used to think when I was in the high school, my young life, we were all college students at Ohio State, and I thought they were just so cool. I was in high school, and they were like a little bit older, and they were like super cool. And I thought maybe by the time I got to my age of 45, that I would not, that kids would just not be that cool. And if I'm not cool, they wouldn't be interested in hanging out with me. And here's what's kind of beautiful about this generation, if you're 45, <laughs> is that uh, high school kids don't really care that much. Um, they want to know, do you see me? Do you hear me? Uh, do you care? Um, and I've seen a responsiveness from kids, even though I'm as old as their parents, that I don't think I've ever had before. There's this desire, this respect. There's this, they feel safe around me. They feel like I'm predictable. They feel like I'm a stable person in their life. That's what they want. Our newest young life leader in Bloomington is a teacher at every seven. And uh, it's su super cool to see how kids respond to this 70-year-old teacher that they just know. He's safe. He cares about me. And he, he really gets this thing about Jesus. So show up in the lives of teenagers. Uh, or you can be a young life leader here in Martinsville. Uh, commit to a community that's actively actively supporting local kids. Um, with the pandemic, there was a lot of loss, I think, in community support. I mentioned the volunteering. Everyone kind of reached, all the adult world kind of reshuffled our schedules. And it's been harder to find people who will join the Booster Club, the PTA, or the committee, or the church and elder board, or those kind of things that uh, are needed for the rest of the community. Carving out time and energy, realizing that you're part of important things that are happening in the community. Young Life, we have a care team of folks that are going to pray for students and pray for the Young Life leaders here in Martinsville. And so opportunities that you see that are around you to say, I, I, you need somebody to be on this PTA. You need somebody to, to help lead this. I'm going to make the effort to be a part of that, to help support the kids in our community. Uh, and then financial generosity, Matt, you're welcome. No, 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 no. Um, the uh, financial generosity. I really do believe that generosity is the engine that drives gospel transformation. And so whatever capacity that is, that, if that's giving here to Faith Church, or it's giving to missions, it's giving to things that are helping support folks in Martinsville and young people in Martinsville, that is powerful because it, it enables others to be leveraged to grab the sharp tool in their life, to invest in the lives of, of young people, to, to hire somebody who can free up their time and resources that their job can be as a missionary to kids or to be on staff at a church. The church that I attend, the pastor says, I think if I could do anything right now, if I had the money, I would hire a therapist to do free counseling in our community because that's where the need is in our community is for therapy, for mental health, and to be able to provide that as a resource. Well, generosity can leverage that to enable people to be incredible healers. Um, and there is Young Life in Morgan County. We just started, like, this has just barely started, uh, but we have needs for prayer, uh, to pray for local students, to pray for our Young Life leaders. We have financial needs to be able to, to uh, perpetuate what we're doing, to be able to grow what we're doing. We would love at some point to hire somebody whose full-time job is to support and to, to work with students in Morgan County. 
Uh, we're a long ways away from that. Um, we also need a lot of networking support. And we're getting started. It's a lot about knowing people, people that would be interested in hosting Young Life at their house, people that know other students, folks that are involved in the school. We'd have, love to have some of our Young Life leaders to teach the tutor for not teach necessarily. Not yet. Kenny's got a couple years still. But to uh, coach or help out in different ways that they can help support the local school community. So those are just some different ways to, to grab the shark pool. Um, if you, the way that students can know and parents can know about what's going on with Young Life, uh, we leverage the Remind app, uh, which is a text service. If you text at while or student to 81010, you'll get a weekly message about what's happening. Where is, where is Young Life this week? Uh, this upcoming Monday, we have Young Life halfway between here and Bloomington, and um, there'll be Young Life gatherings that will happen throughout. So uh, that's just a little plug about what we're doing. More importantly, uh, I want to invite you and myself to, to, sit, to try to understand where is God at work. And where is he inviting you to grab the shark pole to invest in what he's already doing and experience the power and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ in the work that he's already doing? So I'm going to pray, and then I think there's more stuff coming. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this fabulous uh, faith church. Um,